I hope you took control of what you were looking to do today because I know some days, especially in January, isn't it, where you, you wanna, you're trying these new things and I hope you pursue whatever, you know, changes or New Year's resolutions, whatever you're trying to make. Hope you're continuing to keep those up. You know, I know we're only on day three, but no doubt some of us will have already given up on those. Me personally, I think with New Year's resolutions, I just think, you know, if you want to make a change, just have to commit to making the change and that's it. So I think we're given enough time. Let's get straight into it. The question I've been sent in is, it was a, it was a quote, and it said, it's easy to give other people advice, but it's more, way more challenging to give yourself the same advice. And it's an interesting point, it's an interesting question. The question was, do I agree with that particular quote? And the answer is to a certain extent, yeah, I think so. I think when you give other people advice, you know, you can see what the picture looks like. You can see the, you can see them and the environment that they're in and you can see the context of the situation if they're making the right decision. But you're judging that against your own values, against what you decide for yourself, which is another point in itself. You can give other people advice. And, you know, even psychologists, therapists, counsellors, they can give other people advice, but they don't necessarily adhere to their own advice. I don't mean that they don't want to. I mean that they struggle to do so. So why is it so difficult to give ourselves advice? It's so much easier to give other people advice. When you give other people advice, there aren't really necessarily consequences for you. It's them who could have to live with the consequence of the decision that they're going to make. And it's, you know... If you look to someone like Muhammad Ali, he's so inspiring because he would say what he believed and say what he thought was going to happen and then it would happen. And it's his words and he backed it up. And you see some promoters who will hype up their fighters or, you know, people who will hype up other people. And then that person has to go and back it up. There are no consequences. It's easy to hype someone else up. It's easy to criticise someone else as well because you don't feel the effects and the, the strains, etc. So why is it so difficult to give advice to ourselves? The main reason is that when we're in the picture, or when we're in the frame, should I say, it's very difficult to see the picture. When you're in the frame, you're looking at the rest of the world and it's through your vantage point and your values and you think what you know is right. I'm not gonna get you to question what, whether you think what you know is right, but the question is, can you step out of, outside of yourself? Can you be reflective? Can you hold the mirror up to yourself and really look at yourself and say, is what I'm doing the right thing? Is this really benefiting me? Is this really benefiting others? Is this the advice I would give my, you know, is this the advice I would give to other people, the decision that I'm making now? Would I tell other people to do the same? Whether it's your relationships or your career or whatever it is, would you make the same decision as you're making for yourself? The other day I put a quote up on Instagram which said if you talked to your friends the way you talk to yourself sometimes how many friends would you have and lots of people writing back saying crap yeah I need to be a little bit kinder to myself and it's that inner dialogue and it's that voice that changes how we think and feel and by the same token you know the advice that we give ourselves if it's not how you give it to your friends if it's not how you give it to others if it's not how you would contribute to the rest of the world then don't do it for yourself so i really urge you or stress that you give yourself a bit of time a bit of breathing room a bit of space whether it's through meditation or whatever just close your eyes and think and think about how you are acting and behaving in a particular situation if it's a situation that's causing you a bit of turmoil you're unsure and uncertain Consider it, have a think about it and think, is this right? Am I making the right decisions right now? And is this how I would tell someone else? Or is this what I would tell someone else to do in this particular situation? There's probably a part of your life where your behaviour or your decisions or your state isn't where you want it to be. And this is the area where I really need you to consider and to think about have I given myself enough time and enough thought to consider whether I'm coming at this from the right vantage point? It's important to do so because you can easily get caught going down one track, one train of thought, one 
you know, process, whatever, whether it's something you're trying to pursue or trying to start or try to create, and you're so convinced or you're just so resilient that you're going to go this way. But if subconsciously you know it's not the advice you give to everyone else, subconsciously you'll be stopped by yourself, by your own mind. If subconsciously you know it's not the right thing, then the track you're pursuing will never work because subconsciously your brain will find ways to actually stop you from doing it because your brain's trying to find what you think is right. And what you think is right subconsciously is not going down this path. I don't know if you've ever thought about it that way. There's your conscious mind and your subconscious mind. So I need you to think, am I going down the right path, right path, the right track, the right route? And is it what I'd advise the people to do? There's a quote from, uh, I forget the name of the, the, the philosopher. There's a quote that says, do not go where the, path, where the path may lead, but go where there's no path and lead a trail. Now, you, some of you might think that contradicts what I just said. It doesn't necessarily. What everyone says, or what history has told you to go the right way, it doesn't mean that it has to be the right way. Yes, success leaves clues, but your process might be the right way, even if it's not what you think everyone else would do. But if you think it's right, and if it's what you tell someone else to do, that you'd get them to be driven and to pursue and to motivate and to go do it, if it is what you think you would do, or how you, what you would tell other people, even if it's not what anyone else would tell anyone else, if it's what you would tell yourself, to go and do, then go do it. Forget about what your parents say, forget about what your friends say, forget about what the rest of the world thinks or feels or whatever. Stop caring about what everyone else thinks, but just go do it, go pursue it. If it's what you would tell everyone else to do, don't make up separate, separate rules, don't make up separate rules for everyone else and different rules for yourself. Whether it's your child, whether it's your friends, whether it's your colleagues, whoever. Live life by the same rules you set for everyone else. Whether you're in a relationship, you might get angry and frustrated with something that someone else does. But actually, have you looked and considered whether you do almost exactly the same thing? And actually, maybe you're annoyed because they're showing you the same sort of behaviour that you show yourself and you know and you hate that you do. So, set some rules. Set some rules. Even if you have to write them down, set some rules. To live by and make sure that when you tick each of those off, to convince yourself, yes, they are my set of rules, they are my set of values. That they're the same set of rules and set of values that you give to everyone else. Thank you for your time. Uh, the next episode will be next Wednesday, and uh, Wednesday, 7 o'clock. The webinar that I've just started, it's called Power to Change. It's called Power to Change, the Six Sources of Self-Belief. It's a free webinar and it talks about the six areas that make up self-belief. The six areas that make up self-belief, okay? And once you can define, see what those six areas are, you can define why you have self-belief or lack self-belief in different areas of your life. What you can do is you can go on my profile and sign up. There's a sign up link right there and you can sign up to the webinar and they're next Monday, Wednesday and Thursday. So the power to change. So please do that because you've got to make sure that um, you know, there's a limited number of spaces of seating, so please sign up for that. And uh, I'll also drop in a store Instagram story right after this. So if you're interested, just stay around my profile. You can press the story, you can press my profile picture at the top and see the story and I have a link in it. Or you can go straight onto my profile now and press that link. But if you're interested, sign up Power to Change. We will talk about how to, t how to control, maintain and increase your level of self-belief in any area of your life. And I think it'll be enjoyable. I think it will definitely be insightful. It's the stuff I use with my own clients. And I might even provide a bit of an offer to you for my No Limits University program as well. So stay tuned. Stories coming right up. Go onto my profile if you need to to sign up to the link. Otherwise, have a great day. Thank you for tuning in.